So one of the questions I get asked a lot now that I'm a famous YouTuber is, Wow, Justo, how did you get so good at Cuphead? Can you teach me some tips and tricks? Okay, well, no one actually asked me that. But if they did, and if they did, here are some quick, I guess, tips and advice uh, I can give to people who might not have gone through the hell and suffering that I have in Cuphead. So, I've looked at a couple of other Cuphead Tip and Tricks videos, and their stuff is pretty basic. Um, I'm going to go for things that are a little more advanced that maybe you don't know about. And these are things I definitely didn't really know about when I played through Cuphead the first time. And I kind of picked up after I uh, did all my S-Rank guides and my challenge runs. So, number one. Use the right weapon for each situation. I don't know if you can tell uh, through some of my S-Rank guides, I really like using spread. I try to use spread for every fucking boss because, I don't know, it just that's just kind of my, my style of play. I like to get up close and personal, I like to blast them in the face, but sometimes you just have to switch the weapon. Sometimes the lobber is the best weapon, sometimes charge shot's the best weapon. And I'll, this sounds pretty basic, but just because you really like a weapon doesn't mean it's the right weapon for the job. Always experiment. Maybe this boss you're having so much trouble with would be a lot easier if you just use like the pea shooter. Like for example, I actually found pea shooter for R rumor honey bottoms better than most of my other weapons. I was trying to use spread on her, and it was terrible. But using pea shooter is actually very very good for that boss, at least for the first couple phases. So lesson learned here. Number two, and I think possibly one of the most important ones, is knowing when to dash. So. The dash has a lot of functionality and it's I actually find it one of your best tools for surviving uh, over everything else. Even if you don't have smoke bomb, even if you just have regular dash. And y there's a couple reasons for this. The first one is obviously if you need to get yourself out of a tight space or you need to make a big jump like for the running guns, you, you dash to make the jump. That's pretty standard. But some other situations like you see right here is keeping yourself airborne right? Like in Captain Briny Beard, sometimes being on the ground is really dangerous and you don't have time to land and jump again. So what I like doing in this case is jumping and then dashing to stay off the ground. And that actually helps me in a lot of different situations. Captain Briny Beard is probably the most obvious one where this comes in handy, but there are a lot of different bosses where this trick in particular is very, very useful. One other thing you can do uh, is a jump cancel. So sometimes when you jump, you jump too high and it's hard to do like tiny jumps. Like let's say for Dramatic Fanatic, when the fan is on the ground and she is above you like I'm showing here, if you do a full jump, you'll hit her. And you can't just dash forwards because you'll hit the fan. You could dash backwards, but what if you're against the wall? Right? The only solution is to pass between her and the fan. So what I do is I do a, I do a jump and I immediately hit dash, to, I, so I cancel out my, my height. I do a tiny jump and a dash. Another one where this comes in handy is against Chips Man in King Dice, I can't remember his name. But sometimes there are tiny gaps you have to jump through and it's really tough to do that without dashing. So doing a tiny jump, making sure you're at the right uh, horizontal position and then dashing will really save your life. Number three, micro versus macro dodging. I have talked a lot about this, so you're probably sick of your ass about hearing me talk about micro and macro dodging. But when you're in the airplane levels, there are two types of dodging. And not just you know, for Cuphead, but for any shoot 'em up game. You can do tiny dodging, where you only you dodge just enough to survive for the next second. And this is good if you want to, you know, keep damage focused on his head, or if there's a lot of shit flying around, you don't want to move out of position. So the, then there's macro dodging. Sometimes micro dodging is dangerous because you'll get cornered or you get trapped and you have no way out. Uh, I'm thinking of some of the bosses in Jimmy the Great. You have to do something called macro dodging where you make wide movements, and that will help you get around some of the, the bullet patterns. Some of the bullets are will track onto your position, so sometimes doing wide movements will help you get a gap in between. 
Number four, don't die for the parry. Parrying is super important. If you, you know, I, I like playing aggressive. I like getting as many pinks as I can and then blasting the boss's face. But it's not worth it sometimes. You have to understand, like, you don't have to get every single one. And if one gets by, it's not the end of the world, right? If you're doing an S rank, you just got to make sure you get that three. And after that, I, w I would say it's not even really worth it unless you, you're really pressed for time. So use your own judgment for when you should parry something or not. And number five, weapon lock can save your life. I didn't use weapon lock at all uh, during my first time playing because I just didn't have a button for it on my controller and I was, I was like, fuck it, I'll just jump. And that was okay for the most part. Uh, it wasn't the worst, but for some specific situations, which I found through my challenge runs, Weapon lock is really, really useful. Uh, if you ever use the lobber uh, or the pea shooter, having having uh, weapon lock can help you really hit the bosses on some very specific angles. Like for example, the lobber. If you, if for whatever reason you're using the lobber on Phantom Train, it can really help you get hit the boss with the lobber. I wouldn't recommend doing this because the lobber is not a great weapon for it. But that's just an example off the top of my head. Um, other bosses where this might come in handy, uh, I would say Captain Brinybeard, if you're on the ground shooting up, sometimes that would come in handy. If you're doing rumor honey bottoms and you're not, you don't have chaser, uh, or spread, and you just have to shoot below you, like having a lobber or having roundabout with weapon lock is very good as well. So though, here are some quick tips. I, I tried not to overlap with what a lot of other people were saying, because uh, these are kind of, these are tips I found out on my own. But if you have any suggestions, please let me know in the comments and things I might have missed, and maybe I'll make another video if I if I learned something from you. All right, later.